Hello, welcome to Drinks with Ron. I'm Ron, and it's been a hell of a day. So I'm just gonna get right to it. Hey, check it out, I have a pen and paper. That means I actually had to sit down and think about something. Um, I've done a few episodes about my old place in La Crosse on uh, Main Street, and the more I talked about it, the more memories came back, and man, you didn't even get the top half of the stories from this place. So I thought, man, I gotta circle back and especially yesterday, I wanted to have this done yesterday because it was the birthday of one who features prominently in my stories, a guy who I've been referring to a lot as my roommate. I should just clarify that and call him the Mule Rider. Don't ask, that's a story for another day. But we'll just call him the Mule Rider and let's just say that uh, yesterday was his birthday and it reminded me of a birthday he had when we were at that house. In fact, his 21st. Great story, so clearly, I'm not gonna start there. Uh, what I'm gonna do is start with a beer. Buddy of mine sent me a picture of black and tan the other day, and I thought, man, that looks delicious. And uh, another one of my buddies is in quarantine with the, the COVID, the gobus, as I like to call it. And uh, he's watching a lot of the show. So I gotta say, what's up to Todd? I appreciate viewers. And I'm small enough that if you uh, know me and you send me a message or you uh, just leave comments below in the videos, I'm probably going to get back to you. That's, it's, I can, I can incorporate some shit. So what's up, Todd? Todd's in some of these stories too. Uh, what I've got here, that's half a snowdrift vanilla porter because I really wanted a black and tan. But I thought I don't want to do it the old-fashioned way. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my own beers. But I couldn't find uh, where'd it go? I could not find my black and tan spoon. For you drinking novices, if you go to somebody's house and they have a spoon that is like this, you don't gotta worry. They're not on drugs. Well, they might be on drugs, but not because of this. It could be a separate thing. So I guess it's still 50-50 they could be on drugs. But the spoon isn't that, I guess, is the point of my story. Either or. You pick your lesson. That's, that'll be the theme today. Because um, I'm going to go back, jump in the way back machine, and I'm going to give you kids some free advice. What I'm going to do first is pour a makeshift black and tan. I'm going to use a cream ale. Really uh, odd choice by me. Oh, and a bad job. Very bad job. Yeah, my dark beer ain't dark enough. It ain't separating, fellas. Pouring too fast. I did a really bad pour. Thanks, Ted. Makes it easier when there's a dog involved. So, well, that's a bad job. Oh, there is a little separation. Okay, I didn't do as bad as I thought. It's going to it's gonna mellow out. Maybe I'll give it a minute. Speaking of uh, interactive things with the show, I messaged my buddies yesterday and told them I was going to make this drink and pitched for names, and I think the winner was the Creamy Dream. Uh, cream Dream sounds a little too... I don't know, should just call it the cream dream. Tenacious D. Thick. But let me let me pick up where I left off and say we're gonna jump into the Wayback Machine. I'm gonna give you free advice. Uh, okay kids, get your get your tablets out or whatever. Uh, make a note document or how it is you do. <clears throat> You're throwing a party, and I don't even know that you guys can throw barrel parties these days because they're all Serial numbered <laughs> and I'm sure whoever's buying it for you. Well, they're gonna be on the hook So I don't know how you kids even do anymore, but if you're having a barrel party take my advice Guys, I'd say these days ten bucks ten bucks for a glass for dudes ladies drink for free It's uh, it's just a simple hey guys will bitch But when the ladies show up to drink for free, they won't bitch so much you'll make um, easily more money. You'll have less of a mess. 
You will eat some cost in the toiletries, I'll give you that. But that leads me to my next bit of advice. Fellas, if you do this, um, hopefully you have a place two bathrooms like ours did. We had a shitty one in the basement. We should have made that dudes only. We should have made upstairs for the ladies and we should have bought uh, uh, fancy soaps and uh, hand towels and whatnot. So there's some free advice. I gave you some other advice because when we lived at this place, um, a roommate, the guy who we had to get as a last minute replacement roommate, um, ooh, this looks delicious. Okay, not bad. He, within a few months of moving in, got a dog. Not a little dog. He got like a big dog. Like, I, I don't know if it was, I think it was maybe a German Shepherd. It's a big dog. I should show you. I still have my remote for this stereo. There's a lot of chew marks on there. He ate half the remote. But a big dog he gets. And it's like, okay, we got a yard, whatever. I mean, I guess. I, mean, I had to start eating my food in my room. It was a little weird. But uh, that wasn't the weirdest part. The weirdest part was he got the dog, as I said, it was big. It was big already. He didn't get a tiny dog that was going to grow big. He got a used fucking dog, and it was big. So now we've got big dog, but you could tell he had a weird... Well, let me let me come back to that. Um, he named him Kobe. Not after Kobe Bryant, who was actually in the finals that year when, when he got the dog, but a, a shortened version of Cobra Commander. Huh? Kind of hip name, right? You digging it? I liked it. Problem is, this big fucking dog, uh, that ain't his name. His dog's been named. He's been being called something for years, and I believe that name was Tainus. Sounded a little bit too much like anus, so I understood the desire for a name change, but the problem was the dog doesn't understand that you just ran a fucking prince on him and switched his name. He, he does like, you can yell Kobe at him all day. He's going to sit there. And so you say, Tainus, and then he'd come a-running. But when he came a-running, he had a weird limp with his front leg. So after enough people pointed it out, my roommate ended up taking him in to the vet, and they basically said, this dog's got a defect, there's a problem with his leg, if you just let it go, it's just going to deteriorate, it's going to be painful for him, he needs to have a real expensive surgery. So at this point, my buddy says, my buddy, my roommate says, fuck it, I'm out. And he calls the people up where he got the dog and basically complained that he got a defective dog and he got them to return the dog. Yep, I assumed the name went back with the exchange and a player to be named later. But that was just... So there's some advice. If you can't take care of an amnol uh, uh, or yourself, maybe don't get an amnol. Um... Oh, and also while I was there, I worked, I got a job working at a TV station. Sounds awesome, right? Glamorous? Damn, man. Yeah, we went to school for radio and TV broadcasting. I was always going to use the radio part, but there's TV stations in town. Why don't I go hook up with the biggest fly-by-night contraption you can find? In fairness, they were probably the only, uh, <laughs> to be fair... They were probably the only outfit that was going to call me back. So they called me back for a master control gig, which is master control. Man, I mean, it's a great title. If you want to get a nameplate engraved, master control is the way to go. That's tight. Uh, the problem is, it's a shitty gig, a shitty pay. I think six something an hour. I'm pretty sure it was about minimum. Whatever minimum was back in those days. So I come in. Uh, I talk to the guy, have a little interview, I get the gig, they bring me in, they've already got a guy, which is nice, but he doesn't want to do this all the time, he's got some other interest he's pursuing on the sides, he doesn't want to spend every evening pushing fucking buttons and certain tapes at this shitty TV station. Alright, so get a new kid in here to uh, give him a break. So I come in first night, I got my notebook, I got my pen, I'm taking all these notes, um pretty straightforward I, satellite feed comes in here you press this button the satellite links to you send it where there's all these tape decks so this button picks which tape deck you're sending it to this button picks which satellite 
you're sending it to. So you want to be recording all these shows at these times on these recorders from the satellite feed. And then you take the gaps in the shows where there's no commercials. It's like, I don't know, it's not donut. It's essentially, it's in the same ballpark as like donut copy. It's just a gap. And you're going to fill it in with your local ads, which you've sold, hopefully. Not always. But uh, so that was your gig. You took them, you recorded them when they came off the feed, you inserted the ads you had sold, uh, somebody else had sold, and then you got the tape ready, and then at certain times they went into machines with like you'd put watermarks in the, you know, however, whatever the terminology was, but you'd start the tapes would set to auto fire. So your commercials are inserted, you're ready to go. Occasionally you'd run live programming. Because this was a CW, I don't even know if it was CW, the WB. Maybe it was still the WB. Worms in my stool have a show on the WB. Is it the comic to try and triumph the comic insult dog? But let me digress. So yeah, there was, um, same deal, you got satellite feeds coming in, but with these... You'd have to route them through, you'd be playing it live, and there's a no bank of buttons as to what went on the screen. One of the big things I starred on my list was uh, in an emergency, the dump button. It wasn't a dump button, it was like if you ever did something it was like, oh hell, oh damn, this is wrong, you'd punch like three or six or something, we'll say it was three, which was like uh, the Latin channel, all in Spanish. So... You knew if you were watching a show and suddenly you switched to Spanish programming, the master control had screwed up. So that was one of my prides was getting to run WWE Wrestling. It was a new pickup for the WB or CW, whatever it was. So I got to run that. And my buddies would be watching at our place on Main and they were watching, I think maybe the first time I ran it. And yeah, big body slam and then Spanish. So they just die laughing on, oh man, Ron fucked up. Ron fucked up hardcore. If we see the Spanish, oh, it's bad news. So I did training. Like I said, it's a lot of shit. Straightforward. Except for, you know, your tape recorders don't work right. Like there's a weird lag. Like everything's coded. You've got seconds on your screen so you can back it up with a little wheel. So everything's cut perfectly. But this one recorder would wind back and then creep forward a second or two so you had to remember to add negative two seconds to back time your cut on these other tapes so that when the machine would start and catch up it would anyway yeah there'd be little it, it was just terrible so the next day i come in and dude's like well that's it like okay and that's it so like i that's I'm running a tv station that's so I guess the lesson here was uh, uh, <laughs> if a place trains you over the course of like four hours and lets you loose on a TV station, probably not a good gig. Um, I <laughs> actually, I never got fired from there. I worked there a handful of times. I got to be fairly regular. And then um, they called me to work on like a Saturday which I believe the 1st of June, which would have been moving day in lacrosse. So I said, well, yeah, I can't. Oh, we really need you. We really need you that Saturday. Well, I can't. I'm moving. You know, I have to move my house. I can't come down to the station, dick around pushing buttons. I have to get out of the place where I'm in because I'm contractually obligated to fucking leave. And he was like, rah, 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 click, never got called back. So I just didn't work there anymore. They never, they never, I wasn't on the schedule. I was a fill-in. So when I couldn't come through one time, away you go. But the dude that I worked with there was interesting in himself. Uh, he, if you're a baseball fan and you watched baseball, specifically Cubs in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, the Cubs would play the Expos. The Expos were out of Montreal. They had kind of a weird thing. Their stadium, I think it was Olympic Stadium, built for the Olympics, oddly enough, looked like a giant UFO just sitting out in a big empty field of parking lots. Um, 
they were an odd franchise, and they had some odd fans. And one of the odd fans, um, like when uh, WGN, which was just, it's a thing that kids will never understand now. It was a, a regional network centralized out of Chicago. They had local Chicago news, local Chicago morning shows, but they broadcast over pretty much most of the country. So, um, yeah, WGN would play these Cubs games, which meant they were huge. That's why Cubs fans are everywhere, because WGN was everywhere. People saw the Cubs, so then people rooted for the Cubs. That's why there's always a fucking Cubs fan or three wherever the shit you go. It's uh, an old broadcasting deal. It's it's going to go away over time. Let me digress. Um, WGN would go to break sometimes when we're playing the Expos. We. I still say we. I was a Cubs fan for so many years that I, I still say fucking we. But uh, they would cut to break and they would show people outside. Sheffield, Waveland Avenue, people walking by and they're... 80s clothes, waving with some teased up permed hair. And occasionally when we played Montreal, there was a robot. Yes, sir, a dude dressed up, painted silver with components like a robot who was not allowed into the park, but could stay outside the park and he would get his glamour shots out there uh, getting his two cents in as the Expo's robot. Well, that robot was this guy. It was funny because when I pulled into the building, I pulled in, this was right about when Montreal was about to be dissolved for Major League Baseball. So, I pulled into the building, and uh, there's a shitty little hatchback, and it's got an Expos bumper sticker. And I'm like, who the fuck is an Expos fan? And I almost made that comment when I got in there. But luckily, we had, uh, I, think he, I think he had to drop it on me right away and give me the knowledge. But he had like his own website. And back then, having your own website was like, holy fuck. He was so far ahead of the curve. That there was no curve to be had yet. Um, kind of like a sci-fi dude. But yeah, it was weird. Because I'm like, dude, I've seen you on TV dozens of times. That's when he told me, yeah, not allowed in the park. Some, some security pat down, whatever. They don't want you in there being distracting. No fucking robot in the park. Fuck, this episode's going on way too long. So I'm going to have to get wrap it up. Because my buddy Todd suggested... Hey, I don't ever remember you seeing you having a drink left at the end of the episode. So you need to do something about that. And I said, you know what? That's fair. So let, let's make that a new rule. Drinks got to be gone by the end of the episode. 